Hello, and welcome to an all new episode of Men and Women Talk, the Mars Venus Show. I am one of your hosts, Kente, all the way live from Los Angeles, California. I am so happy to be here with you people. We had a lot of technical difficulties because we are transitioning from uh, one platform to another, but you know what? We worked it out. Um, I'm so, like I said, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm here with the one and only Rashim. How you doing, Rashim? I'm good, like a piece of wood. You know that I should. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me recently. My glasses broke. You see this? And these are my favorite glasses. You know how you have your favorite thing, and like, even though it's broke, you're trying to hold on. <laughs> so y'all send out a prayer for my glasses. <laughs> All right, we got. I got a prayer for your glasses. But, All right, uh, thank you. How, how was your weekend besides uh, breaking your glasses? It was pretty good, you know, not too shabby. Um, I don't remember what I did, so that means it was a good weekend. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's what's up. <laughs> uh, I hope, was it because you were you were faded and you just don't remember, or what, what was the deal? I mean, okay, so I spent part of my weekend. I don't know if everyone knows, but if you don't know, here's your public service announcement. Uh, Luke Cage is available on Netflix, so check it out if you haven't. Like. I don't think it was Marvel's idea to get all, you know, to ha add so much diversity, but it must have been Netflix's uh, idea. And so I've been kind of fiending for Luke Cage and I got it. And just a tip for the ladies, do not watch Nick, uh, Luke Cage with your boo. Don't do it. <laughs> Why not? You know, some things might come up. You might make some comments. You might be like, ooh. <laughs> oh. You know, and he may not be, you know what I mean, used to see you in that light, checking out other dudes, so just don't watch it with your man, you know? Pre-watch uh, it. Pre -watch it first, and then watch it with him. Uh, some <laughs> uncomfortable moments with you and uh, Boo there. Right? Uh-oh, okay. Well, I saw it. Uh, I saw, uh, I think it was five episodes. I can't remember. But you know, one thing, and, and then we'll move on, but uh, one thing that was cool is, I don't know if you guys caught this, but Every episode title was a Gangstar um, uh, album, I mean, a song title. Now, if you guys don't know the uh, group Gangstar, they're a classic hip-hop group from the 90s. And uh, they named all the episodes after Gangstar uh, uh, song titles. And I picked it up right away and because uh, I'm a huge fan, uh, rest in peace, Guru. But um, uh, I thought that was really good little touch. And then... Yeah. <laughs> They kind of have a New York undercover thing going with the every week. There's like a new. I mean, every uh, every episode there's a there's another artist singing in the little club thing. You I, know, they had, they had Raphael Sadiq. I felt like they were summoning Empire a little bit with the whole <laughs> artist thing, but I did appreciate the soundtrack. I was like, yes. You know what, my my boy, uh, well Ali Shaheed Muhammad, as well as Adrian Young. Are the music supervisors? So you know, oh, soundtrack was awesome. Oh, it's it's amazing! It's amazing. So uh, yeah, check out Luke Cage. Uh, you know, well, I won't get into that. I'll save that for another time. But <laughs> but definitely check it out. It's a black show. Yes, it's really black, which I was surprised and happy about. Yes. So it's a lot of black folks in it. Uh, the black, music I'm black, y'all. Sorry. Pretty dope. It's pretty dope. All right. So let's, in I want to introduce my uh, panelists. We, I'm going to start off with uh, this brother, man. Um, you know, uh, he's young. He's been on a, a couple of shows that I've done uh, so far. Uh, and I'm just very impressed with what um, he's been able, to, been able to accomplish in such a short time. Uh, it, um, it's the one and only Aaron. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for having me again. Rashim, what's up, Queen? What's up, Mr. Wake Up Better? Mr. Wake Up Better. Great name, too. Uh, now, just give a little background on who you are for the audience. Um, well, by trade, I'm a motivational speaker. That is that is my calling. That's, that's what I really do for a living. Now, if you're talking about a day job, I actually, uh, I don't know what to call it. Um, I'm in finance. Uh, I'm in acquisitions, so I buy big businesses for other businesses. 
So I buy like AT and T and sell it to Coca Cola. That's pretty much what I do. Um, I just I just started doing that. Uh, what? Damn, three months now, and uh, I'm a network marketing professional, full blown entrepreneur. Uh, father 25 year old and just living life all right that's what's up man and if you are in the new jersey area and you are hungry and you want to get you a subway sandwich, <laughs> this brother got you he owns a, um, a franchise a subway a franchise as well as um, you have a spanish restaurant as well right yeah I have a, not spanish uh not spanish is mexican so uh, okay. mexican restaurant um river and braille cantina um, a, a subway and uh, a Muya burger. Also own a candy, well, a candy kiosk and a candy store in Minnesota. Okay, so you can actually take women to the candy shop, for real. <laughs> <They're Really? bold. laughs> I love it. <laughs> really. All right. So this next guy, man, I've known him for quite a while now. Uh, he's from Semicore Studios. It's the one and only Joshua. Actually, Joshua is the one that, you know, when we have our moral dilemmas, he's the one that reads the moral dilemmas and does the. Uh, hmm. So how are you doing, Joshua? I'm doing, you know what? I, I'll just be honest real quick. I have been able to breathe for the first time in about a month because that cold or whatever that's been going around. Uh well, when you have three kids, things bounce back and forth, and things just happen to bounce back to me and stick. And <laughs> I've been sick for about a month, and for the first time, I can breathe, and it feels great. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what? I, th that, I think that makes sense uh, the last time I talked to you. I didn't know you were going through that. So, uh, man, I'm glad that you are here, and then you can breathe, and you ain't dead. <laughs> I'm so <surprised laughs> tell myself. <laughs> so tell people a little bit about yourself and Semicore Studios. Well, uh, hmm, I don't like to talk about my, about, about my excuse me about myself because I never know what to say. But Semicore Studios, on the other hand, it's a uh, podcasting, YouTubing. Uh, go to YouTube, Semicore Studios. You can find all our videos, short film things like that. Uh, there's even a little music video there for the man who sold the world student project. Uh, not mine, Kevin's. And uh, it's really good. Right now, the focus has been on uh, a ben Ben's Cast Wrestling Podcast. Every Friday night, 10 p.m., live, semicorestudios.com uh, to catch all the info. That reminds me I need to update that website. Now, now I'll say this. Um, I, haven't, I haven't watched uh, wrestling for a long time. The last time I watched wrestling, the Iron Sheik was the man. So it's been a long time. So a little bit, I, a little bit. That is so <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I was like the only person who was an Iron Sheik fan. Uh, you know, he was like hated. So uh so yeah, wrestling the male soap opera. So uh <laughs> you talk about the up the up to date uh wrestling. You don't go old school like 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 me, like me. Well, the Ben's Cast Wrestling Podcast, every Friday night live, ten PM is a recap of everything that's happened during the week, as well as news and opinion. So we'll occasionally uh, take it back, but for the most part, we're talking about what's going on here and now. And if we talk about the past, it's generally about how it reflects on what's going on currently. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, and I'm looking forward to hearing your take on stuff tonight. Can I say, can mm -hmm. I say one last thing, like one one last plug. Sure. Uh, so, uh, among, uh, among the other things, you can add author to my uh, list. I am going to be a published author in uh, 2017. I'm so excited. Uh, I finally picked the name. It's called Cats and Elevators. Um, it's going to be my first book. It is a uh, thanks, thanks. It, Give you a little preview. It, it of course is about my story, and the weird title "Cats and Elevators" are the only two things in this world that I will ever be scared of. Yes, my big ass <laughs> is afraid of cats. I mean, like afraid of cats. I will jump in my dad's arm if I see a cat. 
and <laughs> elevators like i've actually passed out in elevators i've taken i still take the stairs and when i go to the city and i work in the city work on the 57th floor i, I take the stairs i'm not lying so there's um cats and elevators that is my book it is it's going to be amazing i can't wait to, to get it out there all right i'm looking forward to it i like yeah. that title cats and elevator i love it as well Okay. All right, so um, tonight we are doing our fifth installment of our all male panel, and I believe uh, Josh, you were on one of the all male panels uh, back in the day. So this is the first one that we're going to do in a video format. So it'll be a little different. And basically, um, the thing that I want to talk about mostly is our relationship to the opposite sex. I really want to focus on that. And um, one thing that I don't think Aaron knows, and definitely Josh doesn't know, is uh, over the weekend, I put together a 15-question survey that I asked a bunch of ladies to fill out. Uh, these are you know, different questions, uh, ranges of different topics. And what I'm going to do is, a uh, little bit later in the show, I'm going to read you the question, and I want you guys to kind of figure out uh, how did the ladies vote, right, what the consensus was. So that'll be a little bit uh, later in the show. Did you did you take it, uh, Rashi? I didn't. I don't remember seeing that link. And personally, I feel excluded. <laughs> but because I'm here, I'm going to answer it while we're live, so you get to see my first response. Okay. Uh, Steph took it. So it's it's um it is uh 40, 40 people took. It. So uh, quite a bit of people took it. So that was pretty pleasing. And the the results are uh, some of them you pretty much would guess and others you know uh, kind of surprising a little bit surprising all right so let's get to the show tonight and i uh, i think the first segment i want to start to start off was when you guys were young lads, lads. <laughs> you know? what are we in scotland <laughs> you know i gotta keep it classy right I was, I was a young bull i wasn't a lad i was a young bull okay young we bull. Gonna, we gonna talk about them young bull days all right and um yeah. you know I think that I can I can recall about you know growing up and and uh, you know when I started to start being interested in the opposite sex and you know the different things you go through emotionally and all of that kind of stuff young so I, I think the first thing I want to start off with you Aaron is can you remember the first girl you were really interested in I'm talking about like you know where you actually wanted to uh, step to her. Yeah, I actually can. Oh, look at that smile. I bet you can. It looks like you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can too. I can. And it's funny. It's funny. But her name, can I say her name on here? Like, oh, yeah. like will you get sued if I say it? No, no, no. All right, yeah. <laughs> her, name, her name was Tiffany, right? And this was like kind, kindergarten. Kindergarten. And her, yeah, her mom was real close with my mom. So we used to always go to each other's house. And we have the same birthday, so we was we used to call each other sisters, but then well, brothers and sisters. But in my mind, I'm like, you ain't my goddamn sister. <laughs> and she was she was like a tomboy and everything. So we we played basketball together, and we was like wrestling and everything. And around that time is when uh, Janet Jackson had a concert, and they put it on TV, right? And I was like a huge Janet Jackson fan, so. My little thing stood up a little bit, so <laughs> she used to come over, like like that that one day she came over and she saw it and she was like, "What is that?" And she poked it. I was like, "Oh man, I'm in love." With her. That was like my big. <laughs> well, so did you guys? Uh, did you guys become an item? That's and what age are we talking? No, nah, we're actually we're actually really good friends. And she's actually gay right now, so. We're, we're just really good friends. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So, same question, Josh. Can you can you think about the first girl that you were really truly interested in and you wanted to step to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. All right. Tell us it was, well, for me, her name was Amanda, and we used to hang out all the time. Just kids playing, you know, the oh, things okay. kids do. Uh, we lived near each other, so we spent a lot of time playing in the, uh, not quite woods, but you know how uh, there are sometimes trees between apartment complexes. 
and you just find yourself meandering about there, playing around. And, you know, this was a very, this is going to be very telling about how the rest of my uh, romantic life ended up. But she did ask me one time, uh, point blank, if I liked her. And this was, ooh, I guess, about sixth grade, seventh grade, something like that. And I looked her square in the eye and I said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much the rest of my romantic history. Why'd you say that, Josh? Why didn't you tell her that you liked her? Because one, I was chicken, and two, I was really chicken. Three, uh, military brat, we were about to move anyway. Um, uh, oh, okay, it's one of, one of those things. So you didn't want to, you didn't want to break her heart when you had to move, right? Is that what it really and I, was? I didn't want to break my heart either. <laughs> if she said, "Well, that is just absolutely awful." Josh is like, "Let's keep it real." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking about it earlier today, so it's weird you ask about that. See, I've been in your head, man. I've been in your head. You know, when when I was when I was coming up, you know, I I did have older brothers, and then also I had older cousins as well, and um, you know, of course, your friends, right? Um, I don't know. Were, you guys had a? Do you guys have brother? I don't think you have Josh, right? You don't have a brother. No. Okay. What about what about you, Aaron? Yes, yes, yes I have. Mm-hmm. Now, who who did you uh, get your like? Who gave you game, or did anybody give you game? Uh, we'll start with you. Aaron. <laughs> like who, who? Where did you get your game from? Honestly, I got my game from my grandfather. Like my my grandfather would always tell me what to say. Even when I was real young, he would always tell me what to say, what to do, how to act. And that's where that's where the 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 whole I don't know how to say it, the the, the cocky side of me. That's where it comes from. It's like he was always the the guy up top. So and he always talked different from everybody else. So I always used to say things he said and it used to work. So I just kept going. <laughs> and he I'm telling you if you saw my grandfather <laughs> he he acted the same way. So, and then once I really found out like about our history and where we come from and, and everything like that, that was just you know, another level. I mean, yeah, my, my grandfather. Okay, so you got game for your grandfather. Uh, what, what about you, Josh? Uh, what, did you have an an older uh, male in your life that you know told you about women, or did you have to just figure it out on your own? Um, I watched a lot of Nick at Night. Like, <laughs> you got, you got uh, Nick and Nick. Uh, <laughs> come on, really? Okay, that might be true. What did you learn about women from Nick and Knight, Josh? Um, well, the, the it's the age old story yeah, of you story. treat someone right, and you know you live happily ever after. But that's not always the case in reality, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. You know that that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, you know the the whole thing about uh, do nice guys finish last? And you know we're gonna get uh, Rasheem's uh, point of view on this. But um, what do you think, Josh? Do you think nice guys finish last when it comes to women? No, not at all. No, I think um, the desperate ones that'll just connect with the first person that shows them attention are the ones that generally finish last. But the nice guys, if they're patient and find an actual partner, uh, will always win. Oh, okay. I guess, uh, I guess it also depends on what you're, what race you're in. So um, what are you aiming for? Long-term relationships, you know, that, uh, that quickie or something in the middle where it's like, it'll last a while and you can get it whenever you want. <laughs> when he said what race you're in, I was like, what well, is race specific? Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wait, you gotta be careful when you use that word. You, you gotta like put quotations on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Do uh, you think women like nice guys? 
I think women love nice guys or the idea of the nice guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's one thing, like, and it's funny, but if you, sometimes when I'm on Facebook, I might see those little judge things, and they had the lady who was she had like a good brother, like a good dude. He was treated at night. He would actually cook for it and everything, and then she just was like. She was kind of scared of it. So she wanted the same thing she was scared of. It was just, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. But yeah, um, no, nah, I don't think nice guys finish, finish last because when, when when women grow up, ain't they told to look for the dudes that hold the door and pull out the seat and, and know, know when to hold their hand and know when to hold them and things like that? I mean, nah. Uh, don't finish Steph last. said a good point, though. She says she thinks passive guys finish last. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I don't think I want to answer. Oh, I <laughs> That's like, I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh-huh. no, hey, we're going yeah, to be counting on Rasheem as uh, the, the sole representative of the... <laughs> Represent all women. Yes. I, I, think that, I think that Steph is on point with that. I think that... Uh, if you don't, if if guys don't uh, aren't intentional about their express interest, um, then they can, you know, quote unquote, finish last because you might be interested. And I don't know, like I've had situations where guys have told me later, like, you know, I was really like, and I'm just like, why didn't you say anything? Like I would have been, I, we we could have worked. You know what I mean? We could have at least explored the possibility. Uh, but I think that if if guys are so passive that they don't even express an interest, it's like, I, I can't, you know what I mean? I can't do a whole lot with that. And especially with the society that we live in, wherein it's set up for the expectation is that the man is going to initiate his interest and the women just kind of make themselves available, uh, depending upon that express interest. It's like, you got to let me know if you're interested. And I think, and I think that that's. I think sometimes you get to a point where guys are like, "Man, I've had enough rejection," or "There's no way that this is going to happen," or "If this doesn't work out right, then it's going to ruin my friendship." Have you guys had those situations where it's just like you've been interested in a girl, but but you're just like, "There's no way this is going to work," so you don't even ask. Hmm. Yeah. And like I've never had that. And like, nope. Aaron says no. Josh says yes. So is it, is it you get intimidated by certain women? Is that what it is, Josh? No, no. I, if I'm understanding the question right, you you kind of look at the situation and realize that whatever it's going to be would be very short term. Something like that. Not uh, not something to build for the future. Just. Uh, Something for right now. You know what? I, I I have to agree with that. There's been situations where I have passed on stuff because I'm sitting there looking at it long term. See, you, you know that old saying, you don't shit where you eat, right? So yeah. especially yeah. situations like, you know, in your, your apartment complex, uh, at your job. Oh. You know, that's, yeah, that's that's yeah. something you just you just hitting it tight yeah. like that is never long term. Uh, yeah, and, but also too apartment complex. Yeah. Hey man, hey, it's, it's real. But uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know, like stuff like that. For me, it's like this: if I don't feel like it's if I don't feel like it's a legitimate chance to really go somewhere, then I'm less likely though to do the apartment complex or the. You know, the job is really hard situation because, the, you know, you don't want to go to your job with the ex, your crazy ex. <laughs> what? Okay, pop your brakes, kid, baby. <laughs> Why the ex always got to be crazy? She wasn't crazy when y'all was kicking it. Why women after you break up, we That's always get the title oh, of crazy? It's not Why ask her to break up. Oh, oh, no. no, it's because that causes the no. breakup, right? Why does that make us crazy? Because we break it. Why couldn't it just be like we just broke up? Why? Why she got to be crazy? No, that's not true though. I have, See, I have ex. That's coming from the same woman though. Like that's coming from the same woman. Yeah. 
you just break up and be like deuces. Some chicks break up and be like, you ain't breaking up with me. If if we break up, your stuff breaking up. <laughs> yeah, your, your house is going to catch on fire. Like some women are on that level. So don't say it's not true. Don't say okay, crazy. Okay, so was she crazy true. when but she it, was in it, a relationship yeah. with you and then you just realized she was crazy after y'all broke up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, no, no, no. See, that's a yes and no question. Because she was crazy. She had it in her when we was mm-hmm. together. But it took us breaking up for her to show it. So yes, yeah, she was crazy when we was together. Aaron, could it just be that dudes like crazy chicks? That is also true. I've said it many times publicly. I I love crazy chicks. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I love the crazy. That's funny. <laughs> no, well, but you know, when you first meet somebody, unless they're really crazy, they they put their best self forward, right? So you don't really realize. The, the fuckery in people's lives until later down the line, generally. Generally, mm-hmm. you know, you don't fart at the dinner table, you know, on the first date, you know, you don't, um, you know, you don't show that real, you know, that, that side that you only can suppress for so long. So what happens is when you get to know somebody, then you start realizing what their real true deal is. So it, it, it be like that sometimes though, sometimes, you know, but I wouldn't say every ex is crazy. But you know, some are though. So some I've are. heard this thing about crazy chicks have the best sex. Is that true? No, pregnant women have oh the best my sex. God. Crazy <laughs> chicks is like. <laughs> I don't know. About, I don't know about the pregnant women uh, woman uh, situation. Uh, you and Josh can speak on that one. But uh, I don't know. Manic sex is pretty awesome. So <laughs> manic. Tell, what is manic? Tell me about what is that, Kente? Someone is uh, manic. Uh, it, I, <laughs> you know, it adds a little, uh, a little fire to the um, the situation. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, mania. Yeah, but but then here's the problem, though. Manic sex might be great, but just chilling with a manic person is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Everything else with a manic person is not cool. Just the sex part can be cool. Can, can, and can we also say that the level of crazy? Because I don't want to be around no manic person. That sounds like that's a level of crazy that it's like, nah, you got to go. <laughs> it, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. But it's I was told that they're more pa- My homeboy was like, they're just more passionate. And that's what makes it better. Well, if, you, if you're really good, you, you don't have to be sane. <laughs> people, will put up, people will put up with a lot of beauty. It's so interesting the trade offs that guys make. Like women he's, he's mentally unbalanced, but man, let me tell you. Women, 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 women nah, I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. That, if, if you hit it right, she's she, she slob, but nah, I mean, if you hit it right, you could push her down the flight of stairs. So. <laughs> So you talk about what is that Harley Quinn type chick? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Josh? You ever dated nah. a crazy girl? I'm still waiting to date someone that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Man. So are you just attracted to crazy women, Josh? Well, it's not like they were like that when I met them. And I'm now starting to think maybe it was me. So you, <laughs> you might have turned them crazy. Could be. Could be. <laughs> no, 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 no. We ain't turning them crazy. I'm telling you, we didn't turn them crazy. It just took a while, like like the honeymoon stage, to to uh, go away. It's like you ain't you ain't crazy, you, or you don't act crazy, or you or you start taking your medicine, and then once we get married, or once we once we finally say we in a relationship. You just stop taking your medicine, and then all hell break loose. Now you was crazy when when, when I met you. As a matter of fact, I should have asked your ex boyfriend, like, give me a rundown on what to say, what not to say, like how to how to handle this situation. Because some some chicks really like you ever had that one chick where you just talking to her and you just think like, did she really just say that crazy shit? Oh yeah, most mm-hmm. definitely, most definitely. You know, a lot of times, though, this will happen, too. You'll meet a woman and she'll tell you about how bad her her last boyfriend was. So, you know, when I was younger, I would be like, oh, man, that's that's terrible. He did what to you? Oh, my God. 
But then you start after you with her for a while, then you understand why that guy was so crazy. So I mean, why he went the other way. So, <laughs> so a lot of times, uh, it, it, it's the person that you're dealing with. So, um, now I, I've I, I said on uh, on um, this show before that I've never looked for a woman. I've never like consciously looked for a woman. Like they always fall from uh, on high or whatever, right? So I, I wonder, is that the same for you? Have you ever like like looked for a girl or or do you just meet them? I'll start with you, Aaron. Wait, what do you really mean? Look like, for them, like, like go like, outside and look for Some them? people like, go to... Uh, some people go to go on dating websites. Some people will go to like a, a singles thing. Some people will do that kind of stuff. No, that's not right. So, yeah, right. You just me. Uh, no, 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 what about you? Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm dating. If that's what you're asking, like I'm dating women right now, but looking for women, I, I'm not going to be on Facebook saying I'm single and ready to meet. That's not me. I'm not going to be on meet up match. Let's get hitched. Like I don't, I don't even know if that's real, but I'm not gonna be able to. <laughs> I don't even know right. if it's real. What about that down? What about you, Josh? Uh, do, you, do you have you ever like looked for a woman? Uh, n- no, not not in the way described. And mm. uh, to go off a uh, comment in the chat, I've never met somebody with the intent of dating them either. I just kind of walked into these things, these people that I've met and have relationships with, whether it's I have dated someone I worked with and I have uh, met people at a friend's house and just kind of hit it off. But never have I gone out to a public place with the intent of meeting someone or picking someone up. Yeah, me neither. Um, you know, uh, do you do you guys go to uh, nightclubs or anything like that? Do I? Twenty five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do I ever? I know some who don't. Yeah. No, no I don't. No? I'm Gosh, curious doesn't. to know how easy are guys to pick up. I found that guys are really easy to pick up in my experience. I, I mean, how easy are you guys? I wouldn't know how easy a guy. If is. you're out at a club and a woman comes up to you and says a pickup line that's a corny pickup line, but she's hitting on you, how easy do you think it would be for her to get you to have more of a conversation with her? First of all, I didn't know women had pickup lines. I need to be invited to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I didn't even know women had pickup <laughs> Y'all sneaky, like y'all sneaky, just meeting like behind our back. But anyway, <laughs> I, I I don't think I'm an easy catch. Um, or I, I like to think like I'm not an easy catch. The, I think the real question behind that is: Have you ever been picked up? Yes, I, I guess you could say, but. I I wouldn't say it's easy. Like, you got to be, and I haven't done often, so it's not like I'm just out here hoeing. But (laughs) I don't think it would be easy. Like, you got to do more than just buy me a drink. I buy my own goddamn So you got to do more than that. And I talk just like this. I talk the same way in the club. Like, I might say something you might not understand. So if you're not on my frequency, you could to the left, to the left. So... (laughs) To quote Queen B. Yeah, right. Josh, are you easy to pick up? I have no idea. Uh, oh, oh, you haven't. <laughs> what? You haven't been picked up, Josh? Not, not as far as I know. I mean, first of all, if I'm somewhere, I'm generally somewhere for a reason, mm-hmm. and whatever that reason may be, I generally focused on that reason. Hmm. If somebody wants to come up and have a conversation, my mind just doesn't go to that place of, okay, here we go. It, it's more of a, oh, here's someone that wants to have a conversation. Hmm. And then it's done. 
How do you respond to when people are flirting with you, Josh? Do you just kind of like, I'm not here for that. I'm at the football game to watch the football game. I'm not interested in your flirtiness. I find out about flirtiness afterwards. When, if I'm with like a friend, they say, dude, she was totally flirting with you. I'm like, what? No. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, can't believe it. Huh? What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. That is hilarious. Oh man. Um, are you are you put off by uh women that are very forward when they come at you? Uh we'll start with you, Aaron. Nope. You know, Cause I, I'm mm -hmm. go go ahead. Kid. I'm saying a lot of guys they don't know how to act when a woman comes at you like, hey, you know, this is what I want. I mean it's different different level. Cause if she likes Steph, then I might back off. Cause Steph, and she know what I'm talking about. She just come up and grab it, like, oh, I, that's when I'm like, help. <laughs> but like, if, if she that Steph forward, yeah, <laughs> no. <I'm, laughs> you like how am I? <laughs> I remember you saying that stuff. Oh, I but I mean, I love when women approach me, and and I could tell, say, like, okay, she approached me for this reason. It's, I mean, cause I I would do the same and. I I could respect. Stuff says she don't be grabbing people. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff be walking to a dude. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. But you know, Josh has already said though that he don't. He pretty much doesn't pick up on it. Oh, what's so up he, with you, Kente? Huh? Do I like? Oh, I love that. Hey, I I like that. Do you? Okay. So you wouldn't be like, you a little bit too much, ma'am. No, 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 not at all. But um, you know what's so funny though is um it, the thing that would make put me off is if I just didn't like that person and then like their um, you know, like their vibe and all that kind of stuff, then I might be put off like nah, you, you know, nah, I'm good. So that would be the only reason that I would have an issue. So Steph asked the question, what is she flirting with you and she not cute? I was just about to answer that. Um, I still, I would still flirt. And everybody, I flirt with everybody. It don't matter. Well, or every woman. It don't matter. So I'm going to still flirt. Taking it further, then I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take it further. If I'm not attracted to you in that way, then I'm not going to take it further. But I'll flirt with you just to pass the time. It, it's not hard. What about you, Josh? Well, if she's um, flirting with you, you're aware of her flirting with you. Okay. She's not cute. It, I think, depends on the conversation and how it goes. Because there have been times when just talking to someone that uh, we have a shared common interest and we are able to have a good conversation, this maybe not so cute person can become more attractive as the conversation goes on. Does this conversation have drinks with it? Because that's what it sounds no, like. No. So no, no one can uh, get more attractive to you, Aaron? As you, you know, got to get to know her a little bit more and then all of a sudden you start taking another look at her and maybe, you know, things change a little bit? If if it did, honestly, it hasn't happened. <laughs> and that's like the honest, the honest truth. Like if, if that was true, it hasn't happened to me yet. And I was not trying to be funny. Like it hasn't happened to me yet. Mm, okay. Oh wow. All right. So um, let me let me do this. Uh, I'm going to reset the show. You are listening to Men and Women Talk, the Mars Venus Show. It's your host Kente and Rasheem. We're doing our all male panel with both Aaron as our guest and Josh. And we are talking about men and their relationship to the opposite sex. In a very in, in a few, we will be going over our women's survey that we put out there, and we're gonna go over our answers and or the answers that we're given. It should be should be real interesting. All right. So um now let's talk about let's talk about actually being in a relationship. Now, um both you and Josh both have children, right? And you guys both mm -hmm. are single parents. So, uh, you know, I don't have any children, so I can't relate on this level. But 
Um, when you are with somebody who's potentially, you think potentially there's something there. Um, what are some of the things that we'll start with you, Aaron? What are some of the things that you look are looking for? I would say in a in a mate that you have a you know you have like uh, one child, right? Yes, I wonder. Right. So, are you looking for someone to? Are, are you looking at how they potentially would be a mother? Are you looking? I mean, what are the, some of the things that you're looking for? Uh, it, it it has changed recently, um, and that's just because of growth. Um, actually, because before I was just like I don't want anybody with kids and all that, but since now that I have a daughter, it's like, <laughs> yes, I'm looking for like how do you, if you have a child, how do you raise your child? How, like how does your child talk if they're of talking age? How do you how do you keep a house? Oh. How do you keep your car? Mm -hmm. Can you watch like things like that? It's like a pretty much mothering mothering things is more that I'm looking for. Not not so much. So you could turn up and you could do the whipping eight like not young things. I'm trying to put that to the side. I'm I'm looking for more of a a, a more mature person, not older. <laughs> more mature person. <laughs> Hilarious. Hey, older women might look, they might be the way. See? Wait, I had to put that out there. I, mean, I know I described all that. I'm just saying I'm looking for more of a mature person. Someone that's gonna challenge me to grow in my child. And, and you said how do I keep my car and feed her and things like that? So oh yeah, how, how you keep your car if a woman's car is messy. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if all I saw was your car, I know how what the house looked like. Hmm. Hey, you know, maybe I should have been looking at the car more. <laughs> <laughs> I got to think about it. You know, messy car, messy woman. Let me, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> all right, what about you, Josh? Uh, uh, what are some of the things you're looking for? Because you, you got a tribe there. What do you got, like four or five kids? Seven. <laughs> You got a, a gym class. What the fuck? Okay, three. I have three beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I looking for? Mm. Um, mm. I'm not. Hmm. Uh, you're not looking for somebody? Or you don't? Uh, I mean, technically, I'm still married. So yes. I, I, my mind is not in that... Um, frame of space you know it's it's been two years actually and uh i just still haven't been able to find myself to get into that mindset of okay what am i looking for and the answer is always nothing i'm not i'm not looking for anything i'm if i'm not working i'm at home with the kids and, and you you have custody, right, of your kids, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've been separated from your wife for two years now. Yes. Okay, and, and so you're you you're not ready to move on then. Well, I I wouldn't say it's anything about moving on because that kind of implies that there's some sort of attachment to the relationship that I'm I'm trying to hang on to, and that's absolutely not the case. I just have this weird sense of um, this principle where I made a vow and until it's declared null and void, I, I don't feel comfortable um, doing anything else, you know? Oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Uh, Cause I sure I'd have, I'd have been uh <laughs> see that I'll be been different. So I gotta I, I guess I you uh, props on that one because uh man, yeah, it's been two years. I think uh I think you'll be all right, but you know you gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta do it make it fun, right? Are you um, working are you working on like that's something that's in the process, right, Josh? Is that what you is that well, what I'm paperwork's been going for two years. Yeah. So I don't know what the deal is. It's just so, taking forever. Wait a minute. So when it's official, are you going to just be like a whore? No. No, absolutely not. Because I am the role model for, for my kids, you know? 
I want them to, to stand by their convictions and principles. And I don't want to have to say, do as I say, not as I do. I want to, I want them to see me doing right. So they will do right. Well, that that's definitely uh, commendable. Um, but I wasn't saying being a whore in front of the kids. <laughs> I understand. I was, but, I was just thinking that. Wait, I was just yeah, thinking I, that. Like, Keho, you know, like, like, uh, yeah, I'm going to work, but you know, sometimes. But I just don't but want I, to fall into the hypocrisy that uh, I would if I said, you know, girls, sleeping around is not a really great idea, especially in this day and age, full of so many STDs and. <laughs> What not while I'm like going bang and everything that moves, you know, and uh, well, not that I would ever actually do that anyway, but you get what I'm saying, right? I get what you're saying, Josh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, I give I, I'm I a give weirdo. You, I give you credit, you got more. No, I, I, I think I would have a hard time like, with it when. when Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, I was gonna say when when I first found out I was father, like I was on that same thing, right? And then, like re- reality kind of kicked in. It's like, oh, she doesn't live with you. Like my daughter doesn't live here. But his daughter. I don't have that. I'm posting. I get the. That that's what I'm saying. It's like that's why I get it, but. I, I was on the same thing. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be sleeping around. I got, I got to really be the example. Then I beg, got lonely, and it's like, she ain't going to know about this one. You expect me to do it. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah, but you know, um, so yeah, um, I give you props for that because a lot of, especially men too, they don't do that. You know, they, um, they, hey, they're free like Mandela. They out there and doing their thing. Yeah, so I give you I give you a lot of props there, Josh. Definitely. So, but eventually though, you will be looking for <laughs> so that's coming. But keep hearing not. that. Ba-dum, ba-dum, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so so at some point you're gonna have to figure out what it is you're gonna be looking for because you know, I'm. You, you seem like the kind of person I. I wouldn't be shocked if you, once you are divorced, that you're gonna probably get married probably soon afterwards or something like that. I don't. I. I don't think you're gonna be out there in the streets. You seem like the kind of guy that like you know want to be married like that. I don't have any personal affectation for being married, um, especially if things go south. <laughs> very long process and you lose stuff so um i don't know i if if anything with gun to my head that forced to ask answer this question about uh what i would be looking for i think it would just be someone that could talk about stuff Mm -hmm. you know stuff that i like common interests i'm i think maybe too old to just be with someone for their appearance or anything like that. I I've seen how relationships don't work if you really don't have anything in common. And I don't, oh. I don't want to fall that that rabbit hole again. I have a question for all of you guys. What is y'all's deal breaker in terms of dating or relationships? What is the thing it was just like if this like I can't I can't deal with this. Like, I can't be with a chick who has 15 kids, or I can't, like, if she smokes, or I can't if blah, blah, blah. What is y'all's relationship deal breakers? Or before even getting into relationships where it's just like, I can't be with a chick who isn't Republican, or I can't be with a chick who isn't Christian, or whatever. Like, what is y'all's deal breakers? Um, she can't use crack. So, uh, I, you know, that's probably a good one to have. <laughs> Not that I'm judging, right? Uh, I just don't want 
<laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want my Xbox to be crack uh, is wet. Yeah, I don't want my Xbox to be missing. <laughs> so when I come back to the crib, going out, what is going on out there in Cali where that's the uh, that's the bar that you do crack. <laughs> No crap. <laughs> so. uh, mine is uh, thank you, Kente, for reminding me of what mine is. It's uh, for short, can't be an Xbox player. Can't be an Xbox player. <laughs> be an Xbox player? Really? Why is that, Josh? This is a PlayStation family. Thank you. Uh-huh. A family that PlayStation together stays <laughs> together. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Microsoft hot, they're pretty, pretty dope. If on Xbox Live, man, I don't know. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little more money because they got to pay for it. So I'm just saying. What is it for you, Aaron? What's your what's one of your non-negotiables? One of my non-negotiables. You want like a funny one or just like a- whichever one? Because the non-negotiable for. All right, well, hmm. I, I can't keep myself better than you how you keep your slant. I can't. If we can't go to the nail salon together or if you don't go at all, it's like, that's out. So you like more high athlete. maintenance? No, not high okay. maintenance. It's just like clean. Like, I, I, can't, I can't take women with bad feet and jacked up eyebrows and Grease under their nails and just look. Like, oh, I, really, I really can't take that. It's like, so that's I'm so that's a little bit beyond clean, because you could be clean and then your eyebrows just grow in however they grow in. So you want clean, but a little bit of manicuring of her appearance. Wait, hold on, time out. Why do I have to be me- metrosexual? That doesn't make me metrosexual. I don't like tight clothes. I- I was keeping my nails in metro section. I'm not sure that's what somebody in the chat said, but what I'm asking you is in terms of clean, you want not just clean, you want a little bit beyond clean. You want her to be uh, manicured, so to speak, like eyebrows. Yeah, like well, yeah, well cut. Yeah. Okay. Um, Aaron, uh, Ari asks, is it bad to take uh, to to take a don't put all your eggs in one basket kind of uh, attitude when dating. So I think she means um, like, um, no, I think what she means is uh, like dating only one person, maybe to date multiple people. Uh, Correct. Correct me. Is is that what you're asking, uh, Ari? Ari? Sorry. Date multiples and date often. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> I mean, if you're uh, just dating, I mean, I, I I agree with Steph. If if all is going down is we're just going on a date, it's like going shopping. Yeah, that ain't nothing wrong. With yeah, that. I mean, until you until you actually commit to a person, if you are just like literally like we're going to the movies. And... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it depends though because. I think when you're younger, like it's probably better to just date a lot of people and see what's popping. But I don't know. I feel like at this point, um, sometimes it's like you know, like Netflix. Like you, you're on Netflix, and there's a lot of great options, a lot of great movies. But what happens is sometimes there's so many options, you never can settle in on one option. So it like messes you up there. So I don't know. Sometimes maybe if you limit it and just focus a narrow search. Maybe that might might help you as well. Uh, I think when you're older, it's better to date more. Oh, she's saying when you're older, mate, you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> you need to uh, find the best person. I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, I think it's different for guys. Like, right, for, because before, for guys, as you get older, the spectrum of who you can date get big, gets larger because you typ- guys typically take age younger wow. than them. As we get older, the spectrum of who we date gets shorter. So, so I mean, and then me, as I got, as I get older, dating for me is kind of like, like I said on on another show, it's like, like, are we gonna do this or what? Because I got shit to do. Like, we, you know what I mean? So, so. Wait, wait, wait. You said we have more options. That's intent, though. That's, yeah, I think guys that's do the, that's have more options because you guys tend to date younger. So the older you get, you got more people younger than you. 
and we tend to be older, so that that narrows the pool a little bit. So if I if I have a lot of people, and then I'm just like, and and then I don't want to waste anybody's time. Like, are you interested in what I'm interested? No, then we can stop wasting each other's time. <laughs> Type of thing. I don't know. Um, so what about you? Uh, you well, you believe that, right? The date is, you know, and you young cat. You you're what twenty five, right? Yeah, I'm twenty five. I mean, I don't. It's hard, like where I'm at right now. I, I know I made like a joke earlier, but I'm not just out here dating. Like we, you going to date, you going to date. Everybody gets like I'm not doing that. Like, do I go on dates with different women? Yeah, but my intentions with each woman. Like I actually have intentions with on a different level with each of these women. Hmm. So I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I guess <laughs> trying to put it in perspective. Now, 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 I gotta ask this question. It's an important question. Now, what what has to happen for you to feel like you can in, introduce someone you're dating to, like your mother, your father, or your people? We got a baby. Um, oh wow! My my grandmother <laughs> met two girlfriends. One of them was by accident. Um, that is it. My dad, till this day, has only met two girl with two girlfriends. My all my sisters, they've only met two like the same two girls, and one of them they have to meet because that's the only way they're gonna get to see their niece. Like I don't, I'm not a be- big believer in just introducing people to your family. Like no, nah, I don't want you to see my my family. You, I don't want you to see none of that. You got that's something you got to earn. As do I. I don't just want to wake up one day and your mother walk down the hallway is like, oh, <laughs> hey, you with my daughter? No, nah, I don't. I'm not with that. Like that is you got to earn that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Josh? What has to happen? Ah, huh? uh, I think I having a clue i agree with um what was just said that there has to be something there especially when it comes to family and introductions because as as far as kids go you know you don't want to be like bringing people in and out of their lives and as far as your parents go you really don't want to have your mother call back well Remember that one you dated a while back? She was so much better than who you're with now. And then you realize that the person you're with now is standing right next to you, and you're like, yeah, this is the new girlfriend. Thanks for that. True story. Yeah, that me, actually happened. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Aaron are, are definitely uh, of the same mind that it, it takes a while for me to feel comfortable to do that. You know, and because one thing is, too, is if you haven't integrated there that much into your life, it makes it easier to cut it out if it need be to. So that's the that's the joy. I mean, the joy, the uh, uh, the, I did. I did. Uh, That's that's the good part of um, when you haven't integrated her that much into your life that, you know, it's easier to cut. You know, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. And same thing, with, uh, you know, on the other side as well. So, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm interested though to, uh, you know, I know it's about the fellas, but I want to, I want to um, ask Rasheen this question though. Have you ever felt like a guy wanted you to meet his folks too early? So the the reason why that's a, a li- only a little bit of a challenge is because guys that I typically end up in a relationship with are guys that were my friends. Oh. So I met their parents as we were homies. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been with anybody uh, in a relationship. Maybe one person that I wasn't friends with for a while first. You know, you really shouldn't say that, Rasheen. Why is that? Because you're putting out there that uh, the pathway to your heart is be, be, be my homie first. I like <laughs> friendships. I like. I feel like like re- good relationships are like friendships on fire. Like I need to be able to just sit with you in silence or or watch a silly movie or 
you know what I mean? Or call you about random stuff and say, blah, 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 this happened. And you just totally get me. Uh, those are the relationships that for me end up into like meaningful relationships. It's funny though. Uh, well, you're married, so you, you know, you shouldn't have this problem now, but if you weren't, cause I can see a guy going, all right, uh, we've been friends now for, <laughs> when do we <laughs> I'm on the path. <laughs> the, the extended friend zone. Right. Now, I, now I've had, I've had women who were upset that I didn't want to, Introduce them into the to the family and uh, and such. Um, I would so take that personally, if I was dating a guy, yeah, but I mean, why though? Yeah, why? I don't. Why? Understand. Because well, I was. I'll say this: if we got to a point where you wanted to be intimate with me, where you wanted me to share my body with you, but I wasn't significant enough for you to share it with your family, then that would tell me something about what I mean to you, and it would make me be like. He doesn't value me in the same way that I value me. Um, so then that's not a reason, you know, then that just tells me something about our relationship. Like our relationship just isn't there. He hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't had enough time to value you to say something that you have yourself. Like I can't value you after me and you six, seven months ago, you knowing you for 25 years, like there's no way I can value you on the same level. Well, that's fine. Like, I mean, not just wouldn't be, we just wouldn't be having sex, but that's cool. So, so in order to have, to have sex, you got to meet mama first. It's, it's not like it's a checklist of like, this is what you do to get to sleep with a person. <laughs> like mama, mama, <laughs> come to the crib. I want you to meet the girl. Right. He's like, all right, what I got to do? All right. You met my mama. Here's my dad. Check. <laughs> no, I just feel like that would just be a demonstration of um, how serious you think our relationship is. And I don't want us to be on two different pages about how serious our relationship is or the trajectory of our relationship. So if you don't think I'm significant or important enough to meet your family, you're definitely not significant or important enough for me to sleep with you. That's just me. But see, that's that's where men and women are different because some things are on a different level. It's, it's, that's just the guy not as true. Like we could be in a relationship and in, in an intimate relationship. That doesn't mean I'm ready to introduce you to my. Oh, well, that could be fine. I mean, like I said, and that could be po perfectly fine. Or, or my parents. And I think there's people who do that. Like I think there's people who probably, you know, they never have to do that. I'm just saying for me. Um, and it's not, again, it's not a checklist. It's just one of those things that would, that would show me that you're not just, you're just not that into me. Hmm. I don't know. And I'm saying it doesn't mean, it, it just, it, I can't see how it could mean that because eventually as we both grow as people together, eventually you get there. But That's fine. And eventually you'll get the right goodies. <laughs> <laughs> What if you what if you um FaceTime with mama? <laughs> what did you FaceTime? Trying to find all these loopholes, trying to find out weeks later that wasn't even your mama, that was some lady you paid on the street. Shit, I'm trying to find loopholes. Why can't I? <laughs> okay. uh, like, you gonna meet her right now. Let me pull her up on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we can get this going. We can get this. Going. 